John 15, please. John 15 and starting at verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes. So there's no way of getting out of it. <laughs> Hello. That it may bear what? More fruit. Oh, so pruning is a good thing. Amen? God begins to prune us. See, we get to a place where we think, all right, man, you know, I'm finally getting with the Lord. Things are happening. All right. Start bearing good fruit. The next thing you know, huh, what's up? I feel a pruning going on. See, God puts us back on that table and crushes us. Soon as He begins to sense pride, you get crushed. Hello? Because that prevents fruit. It stops fruit. He said, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. He said, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. See, God comes to the place in your life where he begins to melt you, mold you, and use you. But when pride begins to manifest in that area, he sees that you can't bear fruit because it stops it. Because then what happens, you try to bear fruit, but the only fruit that we're going to bear is flesh fruit. Amen? So what he does, he takes us back, he begins to melt us, mold us, and prune us again. He begins to begin to squeeze us, and he begins to expose us. Why? Because he's trying to get me and you to a place where we're constantly bearing more fruit. Constantly bearing more fruit. It's not a one-time fruit season. For me and you, it's a life season of fruit bearing. Is everybody with me? He said, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So he's saying, man, you can't bear fruit without me. As soon as we come to the area of self, we can, now, we can no longer bear fruit from the Spirit. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears how much? Much fruit. How much? Much. Come on, everybody say it. Much fruit. Much fruit. For without me you can do what? Nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is what? Withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it, will be, it shall be done for you. Now, because why? Because the desires are no longer yours, they're his. Is everybody with me? He said, by this my Father is what? By this my Father is what? Glorified. Glorified that you may bear what? Much fruit. So the Father is glorified by how much fruit you bear. So you will be my what? Disciples. Wow. Now this is pretty powerful. And there's something that happens here. He's saying, listen, if you're not disciplined, you can't bear fruit. Hello? If you are not disciplined, you cannot bear fruit. So he's asking me and you to get into a place where discipline is always manifested or where we're willing to accept discipline. Amen? Now, turn to Proverbs 5. Proverbs chapter 5. Hallelujah. We have a singer here. Somebody interpret that. <laughs> Proverbs 5, verse 23. <laughs> In verse 21, I'm sorry. Verse 21 to 23. 21 to 23, would you read it with me? For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all of his paths. His own iniquities entrap the wicked man. He is caught in the cords of his sin. He shall die for lack of what? Instruction. What's instruction related to? Discipline. He shall what? Die. 
and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Wow. So what he's saying, listen, remember we went back, he said, if you abide in me, right, and you follow what I'm telling you to do, if you love me, you obey my commands, that means you've got to be disciplined. If you're willing to be disciplined, you're going to bear much fruit. So the things that I've taught you, he says, you've got to be willing to do the things that I've taught you and not the things that you've taught you. Hello? So that means that you and I must come out, because the Bible says come out from among them, come out into this place where you and I walk in discipline, total discipline. Now we see here that he says, uh, they shall die for lack of instruction or lack of discipline. Why? Because discipline is what's going to keep us on the path of righteousness. Is everybody with me? You know, instruction is also a representation of counsel. The Bible says, my people go get counsel from ungodly individuals. You're either receiving an ungodly counsel or a godly counsel. Now, the godly counsel that you and I receive is from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Obedience is to the counsel. In other words, when you and I are obedient to the counsel of the Lord, we must be disciplined to take it to obey. Is everybody with me? We must be willing to take the counsel of the Lord and obey it so that we may maintain discipline. Oh, hallelujah. When we are not disciplined, we are disobedient. So we can see obedience is a fruit of discipline, isn't it? So if you're disciplined, you're obedient. If you're not disciplined, you're what? Disobedient. Is everybody with me? God tests us in all things, doesn't He? We may say that um, yes to any instructions or counsel He gives us, but no to discipline. We may say, yes, yeah, 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 and never do it because we're not disciplined. We'll say, yes, Lord, not do it. The fruit of discipline is associated with obedience. An obedience is also a fruit of discipline because it works in both ways, doesn't it? Amen? <clears throat> now listen, it's very important because if we don't get disciplined in uh, that mountain that we're trying to go through, hello, that trial, those things, if we don't get disciplined in those areas, we go around the mountain. We constantly go around the mountain. That's where cycles come from because of not being disciplined. That's one of the areas anyway. Now a disciple is one who learns discipline. Discipline is training that develops self-control. Everyone discipline? Everyone say discipline is training that develops self-control. God does not want you to go by what your feelings are or emotions, what you see or even sometimes what you think. Discipline will get you through your trials and tribulations and all of your troubles. Why? Because things won't affect you. Because you will be disciplined to be able to go through it. If somebody gets, goes through a car wash, walks through one without a car, they're going to be all concerned about the soap. They're going to be all concerned about the water, about getting wet, about their hair, about their clothes, and all kinds of stuff. Discipline will ignore all of those attacks, feelings, and so forth, and will only look for getting through because he is disciplined. Is everybody with me? He has nothing to do with what you feel like. In fact, sometimes discipline doesn't feel too good. Hello? So, hey, God says, are you going to be a man pleaser or a God pleaser? Are you going to be a flesh pleaser or a spirit pleaser? This takes discipline in everything that you and I do. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> so we see then the results of discipline are self-control. Trusting in God, submission to authority, being orderly or putting things in divine order, and someone that's reliable. Somebody who's disciplined, you can rely on them. Amen? Because you know that no matter what goes on around them, they're not going to be affected by it. That's what produces leadership. Amen? That's also what produces maturity. As individuals begin to mature, they begin, they're more disciplined. That also earns the trust of God. You cannot be a leader who is not disciplined. Amen? So, the result of discipline are what? Self-control. 
trusting in God, submission to authority, being orderly or putting things in divine order, and reliable. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter six. Is everybody all right? Now, what does discipline lead to? A relationship. Hello. Discipline leads to a relationship, which leads to what? A love affair. So, if you're not disciplined, how are you going to maintain a relationship? You will not. It can't work. People who are married, if they're not disciplined, they don't last. That love affair goes back to a relationship. That back the relationship goes to nothing. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Discipline leads to a relationship and relationship leads to a love affair. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Is everybody there? Let's start at uh, verse 12. 12 and 13. Would you read it with me? This is something Paul said. He said what? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. Say that again. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Oh, that takes what? Discipline. Discipline. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the, for the body. So it takes discipline. Let me share something with you. Discipline. It takes discipline to worship, doesn't it? If you're one that doesn't worship, you don't have discipline. That means your flesh is running your life, and not the Spirit. Is everybody with me? If you're not a worshiper then your flesh is running your life and you cannot be disciplined. See, discipline has nothing to do with feelings, does it? So when we get together or whatever, the Bible talks about having the praises of God constantly on your mouth. Having the praises of God. Thank you, Lord. Having an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, Lord. No matter what's going on. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so this didn't happen according to what I want. Well, you know what, Lord? I know that you got a better plan. That's discipline. Is everybody with me? Discipline. Discipline in worship. Dis discipline in tithing. Listen, discipline in waiting. If you're not disciplined, you can't wait on God. You always go. You always want to know how, when, and where. Is everybody with me? If you're not disciplined, you cannot wait. You always got to have the answer now. Can God trust someone like that? No way. Why? Because one of the parts of discipline, result of discipline is what? Trusting God in every area of our life. Trusting God. Well, Lord, you know, I've been waiting for this to happen, and you know what, if you're not going to do this my way, well, <laughs> real discipline. Discipline will keep you in the Spirit. Hello? If you can't be disciplined, you'll be in and out, in and out. You'll be like, a roller coaster. You'll be in the Spirit one morning, one moment, out, in, out, in, out. One moment, you'll praise God, the next minute, you'll curse. That's another thing. If you don't have control over your tongue, you're not disciplined. Amen? If you have no control over your tongue, somebody else does. Hello? Yeah, I mean, come on, I'll step back a little bit. Wait, if you don't have control over something, who does? You're either yielding to the Holy Spirit or you're yielding to the unclean spirit. It's you and I that must be disciplined to yield to the correct spirit. Is everybody with me? That takes getting in God's presence. Listen, that means that you make it, must make a conscious effort 
to seek the Lord. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. You've got to be disciplined to go to the kingdom first. Amen? When you're struggling and so forth, you've got to be disciplined to know that you're not fighting flesh and blood or your brother, your sister, or your family members or anything else. If you are not disciplined, you'll always get sucked in the ring and the devil will kick your butt. He always brings oppression and deception. He brings fear and unbelief. You've got to be disciplined to walk by faith. The Bible says, if you have faith with no works, you don't really have faith. Amen? You've got to be disciplined. Discipline is a representation of yielding to the Holy Spirit, making yourself yield to the Holy Spirit, making yourself stop, making yourself. Hello? Does God communicate with self? No. He communicates with who? His Son in me and you. Because we're now His sons and His, and his daughters, aren't we? Amen? Remember the, the sign that the Lord gave us with John the Baptist and Jesus, right? Look at, now look at that. When Jesus showed up on the, on the scene, right? Wasn't John disciplined? What did he say? Listen, I've got to make a choice here, man. I've got to discipline myself. I must decrease. He disciplined himself to decrease so that Jesus could what? Increase. Is everybody with me? Next thing you know, John went into jail. He didn't care what anybody said, did he? He was threatened and warned and whatever. He was persecuted and then he lost his head. We must be disciplined to be responsible. <laughs> Think about that. He was disciplined. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Listen, I'm going to share something really important with you. The Bible says that the Lord chastens those He loves. Okay? You can either receive the chastening or reject it. That's counsel, isn't it? You can either receive the correction of the Lord or you can reject it. Chastening is a display action that reinstates discipline. Does everybody understand that? Chastening is a displayed action that reinstates discipline. When you are chastened, it's because God is trying to reinstate you to be what? Disciplined. Amen? He doesn't chasten us to cause us a problem. He chastens us to, so that you and I would get reinstated in that discipline arena. Does everybody understand that? What's he do? When he chastens us, he repositions us. Chastening is a displayed action that reinstates discipline. Oh, hallelujah. Are you getting this? 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Read it with me. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one beats at the air. But I what? Discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become what? Disqualified. <laughs> if you're not disciplined, you become what? Disqualified. Disqualified. In fact, the Bible talks about, far be it that you should come and speak my word, you who have made a covenant with me, yet not obey it. Oh, hallelujah. Discipline. Go to Proverbs 6. We must discipline our body. And of course, all of our members. Proverbs chapter 6.
and verse 20. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them what? Continually. Once in a while? Continually. Upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. Oh, hallelujah. Then, when you roam, they will what? Lead you. When you sleep, they will what? Keep you. And when you awake, they will what? Speak to you. Speak with you. Wow. For the command is a lamp and the law is a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of a seductress. What's that represent? Voice of the stranger, right? Amen. Now listen. He's talking about abiding in God's Word. As you and I abide in the Word of the Lord, as we abide in His Word, there's three things that happens to us. God uses the Word of God to speak to us, to lead us, and to keep us. God uses the Word. The, the, the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to speak to us. Amen? To lead us and to keep us. Is everybody with me? So we must be disciplined to be fed by the Word. Amen? We must be disciplined in maturity to begin to make our own meals. We just had a wonderful teaching on that. We must be disciplined. Go to Proverbs 12. In verse 13. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his what? Lips. But the righteous will come through trouble. That takes discipline, doesn't it? A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of, recompense of a man's hands will be rendered to him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. He who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. This is all associated with discipline. The fruitful lip will be in, in established forever by a lying tongue, but a lying tongue is but for a what? Moment. The seed is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous. Everybody say that with me. No grave trouble will overtake the righteous. Oh, hallelujah. How does that, you got to be disciplined to maintain that, right? But the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of a fool proclaims foolishness. Somebody who can't control his tongue speaks everything that's on their mind. Can't hold anything. Constantly speaks. He has no control over his tongue. If you do not have control over your tongue, the Holy Spirit does not have control over you. The hand of the diligent will rule, but a lazy man will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes what? Depression. But a good word makes it what? So anxiety. Is that discipline? No. What does it cause? Depression. People are depressed. Most of the time people are depressed because they haven't gotten what they want when they want it. Because the devil pushes and the spirit what? Leads. Leads. Why? Because they're not disciplined and can't wait on the Lord. Why? Because they can't trust God. This is where it takes real relationship. Has everybody got it? Real relationship. Oh, hallelujah. Go to First Peter chapter five. First Pete chapter five. First Peter chapter five. 
in verse 8. Is everybody there? Praise God. I think it's verse 8. Now let's start at verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 5. Therefore what? Humble yourself. Say what? Does it take discipline to humble yourself? You know why? Because discipline is also associated with choices. You must be disciplined to make the right choice. Why? Because everybody here knows to make the right choice. Everybody knows the right choice to make. You just got to be disciplined to make it. <laughs> Hello. There's no excuse in not making the right choice. We just have to be disciplined to make it. It takes discipline to humble yourself. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may what? Exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon Him for He what? So you know what? We must be disciplined to cast our cares on Him and not try and fix it ourselves. That takes discipline. Anything that's associated with a choice is, takes discipline. You want to make the right choice? You've got to be disciplined. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking someone who's not disciplined. <laughs> Hello? Think about it. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Wait a minute, we just said that it takes discipline to walk in faith, doesn't it? Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody goes through it. You're no different than anybody else. God is not a respecter of person. And the devil doesn't respect anybody, so don't worry about it. Hello? <laughs> But may the God of all grace who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have been, suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you so that you are what? Disciplined. Is everybody with me? One of the things God does in the area for me and you to be disciplined, we have to be disciplined to constantly shut the door to the devil. Now the Bible tells us that the Spirit tells us things to come. So you and I must be disciplined to even listen. It takes discipline. Why? Because your flesh wants to go in every direction at the same time. You must be disciplined to pull it in and say, be quiet. You know, the Word tells us that when you and I have been delivered from something, to build back on it, it's an abomination. To build back on something that God has delivered us from, is a, it takes discipline not to go back to those old roots, doesn't it? It takes discipline to stop going to those things that God has delivered us from. Why? Because then what it does is open the door to the devil. And you'll be struggling with more than what you just were struggling with. It may not manifest that day, but it will. It will. You must be disciplined not to allow pride to run your life. Listen, pride is a spirit. It's a spirit of haughtiness. It's a spirit. We must be disciplined constantly to recognize that we're not fighting flesh and blood, but powers of darkness. Why do I feel the way I feel? Why have I done what I've just done? Why did I make that decision? Why am I thinking what I'm thinking? The Bible says, cast down thoughts and imaginations that will come against the knowledge of the Lord. That takes discipline. If you get sucked away by every little wimpy thought that the devil throws at you, you're not disciplined. You'll go astray all the time. Amen? Takes discipline. Discipline takes practice. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Go to Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. You know that song that we sing, Lord, light the fire again? I need your discipline. Hello? <laughs> you 
You know, it takes discipline to pray. If you're not disciplined to pray, you're out. <laughs> you're out, man. They will use you like a puppet. Has everybody got that? I mean, if you're not, a, if you are not disciplined to pray, it's amazing how people are just are they're disciplined to go to work because their reward is money. But they're not disciplined to pray because the reward they can't see. Why? Because they're carnal. They want the reward to bring satisfaction instead of the reward and building up of things in heaven. Amen? See, you'll know where you're at is if the first question you ask is, how much do I get paid? If God opens a job for you, is the first thing that you ask is, how much money? Then you know where you're at. Does everybody understand that? Can God trust you? No. Why? Because there's always something involved in what God... So what you're, every time God asks you to do something, you're going to want to know what's involved in it. What's your reward? Does everybody get that? Why? Because the individual is not disciplined. We must be disciplined. Why? To obey. It's not about money. Money isn't going to save any soul. Amen? Only the Spirit is. So would it be better to be wealthy or be an intercessor? Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> Why? Because you're building treasures in heaven. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You get, you get home and find some of these intercessors that have been living in cardboard boxes. <laughs> And you find other people have been building buildings and churches and all kinds of stuff. You know who's going to get the greater reward, that intercessor. Amen. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Luke chapter 9. And, uh, verse 23. Everybody there? Did you read it with me? Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Hello? And what? Follow. Does that take discipline? What did he say? The first thing is to what? Deny ourselves. Does that take discipline? That means that there's a choice involved, isn't there? That means you must be disciplined to make the right choices. If you're not disciplined, you will not make the right choices. Amen? You won't. You can't. You always go by what you feel. If it doesn't bring reward to the soul or the flesh, you'll go astray. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 24. Read it with me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains a whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? Remember, a servant of the Lord does not have a life. It's no longer your life. When you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you gave Him your life. It takes discipline to constantly give that life every single day to Him, doesn't it? That's why the Bible tells us to present our bodies as a what? Living sacrifice. That takes discipline to do that. If the first thing you get up in the morning and you want to feed your flesh before you feed your spirit, that takes discipline. Amen? It takes discipline. To be able to discern when you know that you're stepping over the boundary lines or you begin to get fleshly, it takes discipline to say, wait a minute, I need to step back and pray. It takes discipline. It also takes practice, doesn't it? But by putting 
discipline in action, it takes practice. By even considering to practice discipline, it takes discipline. Has everybody got it? <laughs> Hello? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. In verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you what? Walk circumspectly, not as what? Fools, but as what? Redeeming the what? Time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. But understand what? What the will of the Lord is. He says, awake. In other words, don't walk like a fool, but discipline yourself to walk in the wisdom that God has given you. Discipline yourself. See, wisdom tells us what to do with it. You already know what to do with it. It takes discipline to do it. Oh, hallelujah. One of the three things that the devil wants to do with us, and we've heard this before, he wants to get us to a place where we are constantly thinking that he's not involved in our life. Amen? Of course, we know that he wants to be a part of every one of our decisions. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't want you to think that, does he? He doesn't want you to realize that he's not only involved in your life, but he's involved in every one of your decisions. Amen? And of course, the other thing he doesn't want you to know is truth. See, this is where the Bible says always, always learning, but never coming to the truth. You know why they're never coming to the truth? Because they've learned, they know the truth, but they're not disciplined to do it. Because darkness is running their life even though they have the truth. Everybody with see darkness is still running that light in that person. The Bible says that we're like a lamp, aren't we? See, eventually he'll move the individual or individuals into a place. They'll have a form of light, but the devil's actually running their life, and eventually that light will go out. Because what he does is uses that light to attract other lights to impart deceptive things. Is everybody with me? Why? Because the individual is not disciplined. One of the things, the other, the, the, uh, another thing the devil doesn't want us to really do is pray. He doesn't want us to pray or have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Spirit is truth. Amen? So three things the devil doesn't want you to do. He does not want you to, or he doesn't want you to know, is that he's involved in your everyday life and every decision. He doesn't want you to know the truth of the Word of God. And He doesn't want you to pray or have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Is everybody with me? How does He do that? He causes you to move out of the place of discipline into the place of deception. Because if you're not disciplined, you're deceived. All praise be to God. He likes us to get us into a place where we are lazy and slothful. Where we're relying and depending on everyone else except for Him. We're depending on our self except for Him. He wants to get us into that place where we begin to compromise. And the word compromise means put one eye on evil. One eye on evil. One eye on evil. Is everybody with it? Compromise. A miser is one who puts an eye on evil. <laughs> Hello? So if he can convince us to do that, it moves us right out of discipline. It doesn't mean that you won't be a dick. It doesn't mean things won't come across your path. But if you're disciplined, you, they will not affect you. Amen? They will not affect you. You know, the devil's going to send um, people from your past in your life. You ever notice when you finally quit using dope, every dope dealer calls you? And they offer it to you free. You know? All the friends that you used to drink with and party with that you haven't seen in years, they begin to call you and show up. See, 
one of the things that to be disciplined, you must be disciplined so that you take the Word of God and utilize it. That when you say you're a new creation in Christ, all things have become new and old things have what? Passed away. That means whatever you have had in your past, whatever you used to do, has to be brought back to you by God and not by you. Or it stays away. In relationships and everything. If you're not disciplined in that area, God cannot trust you. All things have what? Pass away. All things have what? Become new. That means if you're willing to surrender this life and become or walk as a new creation in Christ, it doesn't matter what you have done. You could have been the biggest world's bodybuilder. If you're a new creation in Christ, you've got to allow God to return that and not you. And you must be disciplined to allow that to happen. So everything that you, anything, you must be disciplined that whatever God blesses you with, you must return back to Him. Does everybody understand that? Because it's not ours anyways. You must be disciplined to tithe. You must be disciplined. Like, hey, listen, when you and I are disciplined, God can not only trust us, but He looks at me and you as a good steward of His goods. It takes discipline. If you can't run your own house, this temple, and you can't be disciplined in taking care of this, how can you be disciplined in taking care of the things of God? See, but the devil would like to push you and say, listen, I'm ready for the things of God. I know the word, I know this, I know this, but you're not disciplined. That means the devil's taking you as a light and putting you into a place where he can use you to bring deception. It takes discipline. It takes discipline to discern. It takes discipline to humble yourself. It takes discipline to repent. Amen? It takes discipline. Hallelujah. It takes discipline to pray. It takes discipline. Go to uh, Matthew 12. Hallelujah. Matthew 12, verse 9. Hallelujah. Matthew 12 and verse 9. Everybody there? Oh, to God be the glory. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out. Of how much more value than is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and is restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. Hey, listen, it took discipline because he was being attacked in every way, wasn't he? He knew what was going to happen, didn't he? Why? Because he was walking in the fullness of the Spirit. The Spirit already told him what was going to happen. He told him they were going to plot to come against him. But you know what he was? He was disciplined to do the will of God. You must be disciplined to do the will of God. Amen? You must be disciplined. Jesus comes and blows away their theology. Now, the opposite with these gentlemen, because of the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were so bound by the letter that they were over-disciplined. They were so accustomed to discipline in the area that they could not be led by the Spirit, that they become bound. Amen? They, they, they were so over-disciplined, they became bound into that area where they lost compassion. They lost compassion. It was now fulfilling of the law, which they couldn't fulfill anyway. And then they implemented their own traditions <laughs> to try and improve the law. And they became 
disciplined in their own laws instead of disciplined in the true law. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So they, were, they became so self-righteous, so over-disciplined in the self-righteous area that they could not hear what the voice of the Lord was saying. Not only did they lose compassion, but they led many people astray. And Jesus rebuked their whole theology. He said, listen, listen, it's a Sabbath. I understand that, but man, what happened to the compassion? You guys are so over-disciplined and so bound by the letter, it's ridiculous. You think, I mean, remember Jesus said, you, you read the scriptures that ta uh, talk about eternal life, but you're not willing to come to me to get it. <laughs> they were so bound by religion. Amen? And, and, and he, he, he rebuked them in that arena and shared with them, listen, here it is on the table. Where's your compassion for this individual? Where's your compassion? What happened? Their heart got hardened. They became religious robots. <laughs> Their heart became hardened. There was no more compassion. They were so bound by the letter they were in bondage themselves. Amen? So there's a discipline which is leading of the Spirit, impressed by the Spirit, and then there's discipline which is impressed by the devil. Okay? There's discipline that is impressed by the devil, which leads to bondage. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 4, Read it with me. We have such trust through Christ toward God. Come on, read it with me. That Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. In other words, they were so impressed by discipline from darkness that they become bound. Remember, the devil will push you. He loves to bind you. He likes to associate with the things in the flesh to be disciplined according to the things of the flesh, but not disciplined according to the things of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. You know, you and I must be disciplined in the things we eat. Why? Because we know it affects us, doesn't it? We are responsible for this temple. Not only eat things that we eat spiritually, but physically. We've got to be disciplined. Hallelujah. We must be disciplined to repent. Amen? When we've blown it, we've got to be disciplined to, you know what, I'm not going to let pride or justification or blame it on somebody else. This is my, well, that takes discipline, doesn't it? Why? Because discipline is a, an, an arena to where nothing around you will move you. Why? Because discipline will keep you in the boundaries and the borderlines of relationship with the Lord. Discipline leads to what? Relationship and what? Love affair. Oh, hallelujah. We must be disciplined to attack before we're attacked. <laughs> when you get up in the morning, are you attacking the powers of darkness or are you waiting for them to attack you? It's too late. It's too late. How do you think people go astray? They're not disciplined. They're not disciplined to bind the powers of darkness, use the weapons of God. They're not disciplined. They're more disciplined than fluffing up their little soulish arena or feeding the flesh. Amen? We must be disciplined. If you haven't, when you get up in the morning, if you're not attacking the devil, then you're not disciplined. Everybody got it? Now, can God trust someone who's not disciplined? No. Can you trust someone that's not disciplined? No way. <laughs> Come on, think about it. If you can, you think God's going to? No way. You know, you can't even trust yourself. Do you understand that? That's why we must be disciplined to do what we're supposed to do because we can't even trust ourselves. Self is associated with the old man. 
Oh, hallelujah. Go to uh, verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. Discipline will maintain your freedom, man. Let me tell you that. Discipline will maintain discipline will maintain your healing. Discipline will maintain your deliverance. Discipline will maintain your relationship. Discipline will maintain your love affair. Discipline. Discipline will maintain your finances. What on heaven he will get disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And you will have them. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? One of the things of, even with the gifts of the Spirit, we must be disciplined to utilize those gifts. Why? Because they're tools. Listen, when you're dry and you know it, and the devil's just drained you, and you've done all you could to stand and you've been disciplined, prophesy in your life. Well, what do you mean prophesy? Well, it's a gift that's in you. Spirit of prophecy. Amen? Prophesy in your life. Tell these dry bones to get wet. <laughs> call forth the Spirit of the Lord from the north, south, east, and west to come and fill you. Prophesy it. I call it forth, calling those things that are not as though they are. That's prophesying, brothers. That's prophesying. Amen? Now, if you're disobedient, are you able to prophesy? No. Are they going to come to pass? No. What about the words that have been spoken over you by prophetic? If you're disobedient, is that going to come to pass? No. So that means it takes discipline to walk in obedience, right? Why? So the word that has been spoken over you can meet you in that path of discipline. Hallelujah. There's a difference between a lost soul and a saved one. Because you are saved and know the truth, you're accountable for more. So it takes more discipline. Why? The Bible says, for much is given, much is what? Required. That takes discipline, doesn't it? Come on, does everybody get this? See, you just can't come into Bible study and get all of this stuff and leave and not be disciplined and expect God to bless your socks off. It ain't going to happen. In fact, the devil's going to come and steal everything that the Spirit has given you. You know, many of us see people come and go out of congregations. We have the discipleship. We see people come and go. Man, they get truth, get truth, get truth, and still refuse to obey it. Always learning and never coming to the truth because they are not disciplined. You know why? Because the only discipline they are still fighting with is a discipline that's impressed with them by the powers of darkness. They're still struggling. You know, those individuals really have not given their lives to the Lord yet. They mention it. They say it. They act it. But they haven't done it. Because you know what? It takes discipline to give this life to God every day. Oh, hallelujah. Prophesy it, man. Glory. Proverbs 16. Lord, I'm dry. I call forth the oil of gladness. Hello? I need me an oil change, Lord. Rip this, rip, rip this old wine skin. Give me some new wine. Restore to me my first love. I call it forth in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 16. Verse 16. Is everybody there? Would you read it in verse 1? The preparations of the harp belong to... Amen. Say that again. The preparations of the harp belong to... Amen. One more time. The preparations of the harp belong to man. Now, does that take discipline? Amen. You got that right. But the answer of the tongue is from the what? What does it first take? Preparation of the heart then the answer of the tongue can be from God. Or else the answer from the tongue is from who? The devil. 
That's why you, it's our, we must be disciplined to prepare this heart. Amen? Every single day. This heart must be prepared. Why? Not my will, but your will, Lord. Lord, search this heart out. Remove everything that's in it that offends you and causes me to stumble. Because if it's offending you, I'm going to stumble. It takes discipline. All the ways of a man are pure in his what? Oh, man, I'm doing the right thing. I feel it. I feel I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> Come on, I want to be rewarded. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. All the ways of a man are pure in his own boneheaded eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirits. What does he say? Commit your works to the Lord. Say it again. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will what? And your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for Himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. Though they be next to you. Though they worship with you. Though they fellowship with you. Though they pray with you. God knows that heart. And they will not go unpunished. It takes discipline to prepare preparation of that heart, doesn't it? Commit your works to the Lord and He'll establish your thoughts. Thoughts, In other words, constantly be in the arena of surrender. Quit bucking and start what? Bowing. That takes discipline. Go to James 4. Oh, to God be the glory. James chapter 4. How many of y'all want to bear more fruit? And you need to get pruned. One of the things that need to get pruned out is the garbage and discipline needs to get established. Verse 1, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? James 4 and verse 1. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you what? Do you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you what? Ask, ask amiss that you may spend it on your what? Pleasure. Pleasures of what? Flesh? Flesh. Listen, it's you know, we have a tendency to think, well, okay, the, the flesh wants to do this. Listen, there are desires that God will put in you that may look like pleasures of flesh, but they're not. Amen? Has the Lord ever told you to buy a specific car? You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's some, why? Because there's something he wants to... You don't even know what's going to happen. He may be telling you to buy the car. Why? To bless somebody else. So he's going to put this in your spirit. I'm going to give you an example. I used to ride Harleys a long time ago. Well, I ride one, once a year for three days. <laughs> now, <laughs> I've been prophesying that in for a while. And... Uh, um, you know, I, I mean, but that was not my priority. And I had opportunities to buy one over and over. And I was like, no, there's too many things. It's, it's just never come to me. And after 12 years of ministry, all of a sudden it started coming to me. And I kept going, no, this can't be. I'm not supposed to be looking for a Harley. And then one day I was, uh, I was invited to go to Covenant House. I came and had a meeting with them. And it's a place that's nationwide. And they take um, men and women and so forth and pregnant women and that have been in foster care for many years that are 18 now and they have nowhere to go and waiting for whatever. And I was just led to go there to share about our discipleship and, and possibly I was led there to implement Total Freedom Program. And I had a wonderful meeting with them and, and, and all of a sudden out of nowhere 
I had like a vision or a dream or whatever you want to call it, and I don't know how it came to me, but I saw myself on a Harley at this place with this really nice Harley. And, uh, and all the kids were coming out, and as I got off the bike, I was able to minister to them. So I just let it go. And I waited, and it kept coming to me. And it kept coming to me. And I said, you know, Lord, if, this is what's, if I'm supposed to be looking for a bike, I know that you're going to supply the finances. And, uh, and, and if I'm supposed to be looking for a bike, then, you know, I need to have confirmation. And, and out of nowhere, two individuals came up to me. One of them was my wife. And I had shared with her about, I just said, you know, I, I wonder if I'm supposed to look for a bike. And she said, you are. And then somebody else came in and said, man, talked about getting a Harley. And I'm thinking, wow. So I went back to prayer and I just prayed and, and I just started to search a little bit here and a little bit there. But I had no witness of it anymore. In other words, I knew I was supposed to get a bike, but it wasn't a typical Harley. It was supposed to be something more eye-catching. And uh, so I ran across something and worked out something. Actually, this company that makes custom bikes... I mean, they sell for a lot of money. And uh, when I went in there, it was everything I wanted about a bike. All special things, six-speed transmission, all kinds of stuff about a bike. Right side drive where it balances and all kinds of things. Things that Harleys can't and with a better and longer warranty. And I thought, man, I mean, these things are expensive. I can't do that. So anyways, I searched around and searched around. And, and I was led to go back to this guy. And I said, you know what? I don't know why. But I said, but... He says, listen, let me tell you something. He says, you're the first one we're going to do a kit with. In other words, it's $10,000 cheaper, and we're going to do a kit with you. And I thought, whoa, Lord, this is wild. So I end up ordering the kit. Of course, it's not in yet. And what has to happen is I've got it. It comes assembled, unwired, but it has to be disassembled, wired, painted, and everything. So I said, okay, Lord. Now, I just put that aside. They told me it'd be 10 weeks, 8 to 10 weeks, whatever. Now, remember I told you about that vision I had of me with, this, with the kids and the bike. So about two days ago, yeah, about two days ago or three days ago, I get um, a call from the guy saying, listen, your, your frame is being shipped from some other place to the place where they're going to start to fabricate it. I said, cool. I get in the, in the mail a letter from Covenant House saying our meeting went wonderful. No, I haven't heard from Covenant House in two, two months. On the same day, hello, on the same day that the guy called me about the frame, the same day I get that invitation to go back to Covenant House for us to minister to their kids. Do you understand what I'm talking about, about being disciplined? Listen, just because certain things may seem like flesh, God wants to use things that may bring a desire of flesh to someone else, but as long as you're disciplined and staying in the Spirit, God will use those things because you know you and I don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. It's all His. And His whole purpose is to utilize things to bring children into His kingdom. Amen? Even who you are at work your job and your position. If you're disciplined not to get sucked up while everybody else is arguing and strife is going on and complaining about the work, complaining about the boss, complaining about this, complaining about that, if you'll stay disciplined, your light's going to shine. You're going to be bearing fruit by not saying anything. Hello? Look at Job. He bore fruit by not saying anything. What would the, the devil want him to do? Curse God? How many times did the devil try to suck you in the ring to get into an argument and strife and try to prove yourself that you're right, even if you are right? And God's Holy Spirit say, man, don't say nothing. Just let it go. Don't say nothing. No! You better discipline that little flesh thing. Amen? Discipline. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody with me? Eh, praise God. <laughs> you ask a miss. Why? Because you what? You want to spend it on your what? Your own desire. But remember something. That's an individual that's not disciplined to go in the Spirit. Because God's going to give you the desires of your heart because they're His desires, not your own. Oh, hallelujah. We must be disciplined. 
Go to Jude 20. Glory. Everybody there? Jude 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in what? Oh, so many people are not disciplined by praying in the Spirit. They are not disciplined. It takes discipline to pray in the Spirit. It takes discipline. Why? Because by praying in the Spirit, it's going to assist you to get in the Spirit. If you're getting up in the morning, doing your little religious prayer, without praying in the Spirit, because the Spirit prays through you and for you, prays the perfect will of God, and the devil doesn't know what you're praying, if you're not praying in the Spirit, you are not disciplined. If your only concern is what you're supposed to do that day at work, your discipline is in the wrong direction. Hello? Work will not save you. Work will not pay your bills. He does. It takes discipline to come out of the carnal arena and walk into the Spirit and recognize that everything has nothing to do with your relationship but you and Him. Does everybody under it takes discipline to walk in the Spirit. My job, my position, my, 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 my. It takes discipline to come out of that area. Keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. It takes discipline to pray in the Spirit. Amen? And some have compassion making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before before the presence of His glory with exceedingly joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever and ever and ever. Hebrews 12. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody there? Hebrews 12. Would you read verse 11 with me? Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it, or what? Disciplined by it. Amen? So discipline isn't always going to be joyful. <laughs> Amen? But it'll produce fruits of righteousness. Isn't that what we want to do? Bear more fruit? So I want to encourage everyone here tonight. If you've been in the area where discipline has not overtaken your life or you've not allowed discipline to overtake your life and your life is overtaking discipline and you find areas in your life to where you need to repent of not being disciplined or allowing the Spirit to discipline you or chasing you, I encourage you to ask for His forgiveness tonight and get in the place where you are disciplined because discipline leads to a relationship and maintains a love affair. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Amen? Father, we thank you for your word tonight. And Lord, we take this opportunity to repent for any area in our life where we have been fallen short of discipline. We thank you that you're faithful to forgive us. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, we forgive and bless those and pray for those who persecute us, use us, and speak against us. Forgive them for they know not what they do. But Father, grant us discipline. Give us the strength that we may be disciplined and bring honor to you. That the fruit may be bared through us, Lord, to bring glory to your name and expand your kingdom. We commit all things to you. We discipline ourselves. 
to commit all things to you. We discipline ourselves to pray. We discipline ourselves to seek you. We discipline ourselves to trust you, to wait on you, and to rest in you. We discipline ourselves, starting even tonight, to bring you glory, to bring you honor, and to bring you fame by what you do through us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.